I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. In this video, I want to continue talking about the Easy Mini Altimeter from Altus Metrum. In the last video that I did, we showed how to put this in a vacuum chamber and test it to make sure everything is working. Uh, but this is also a recording altimeter, and you can download data off of the altimeter after the flight. And that's what I want to show you today. Um, I have my computer here, and I want to hook it up to the computer and download everything. As you can see, I have a battery installed, plus a switch and two igniters. This is just like it would be in flight condition. To hook it up to the computer, there are two things you need to know. Uh, first, you must have the battery installed. The computer, when you hook it up, does not transfer any power to the altimeter itself. So that's important to know. Secondly, you have to have a switch installed to be able to turn it on and off. And I just turned my switch on. <laughs> okay. And it's going through its, its cycle. Let me turn it back off. We don't need that on right now. Um, so you have to have the switch installed. If you don't have a switch, take a piece of wire and go from one terminal side to the other on the board, and that will simulate a switch in turning it on. Um, one of the uh, parts about the altimeter that it's annoying is that you have to take it off of the board to be able to plug it in because the uh, this plastic part of the plug uh, typically interferes with your the board that it's mounted on. So I have to get it off of the board to be able to get the plug all the way in. So then you can plug it in. This is the mini USB cable. And if you don't have one, um, check your camera bag or maybe your Kindle. Um, we, we do sell them if you can't find one. Um, and then you can plug it into your computer. Um, and on my computer, I have already loaded the Altus um, OS uh, software. And their software controls a whole bunch of different altimeters. So there's a lot of features in the software that aren't available for the Easy Mini. Um, so I'm going to turn on the altimeter at this point, And all the power is coming from the battery. And it's going through its routine. And those last two dits uh, are telling me um, that it's in um, idle mode. You know, they're the, the middle two dits are in idle mode. Um, and, that, and now I can go to the Altus um, software, and it brings up this screen. Um, if you're running a Mac, the first time you run it, um, it you're going to get an error message saying uh, something like, um, it's damaged software. Uh, basically, this is um, Apple's way of telling you that it didn't sell you the software through the, the i or the, the, the App Store. Um, they like to control everything that goes onto your Macintosh. So you have to change your settings, your privacy settings, on your Macintosh to be able to run the software. Once you do that, it should run just fine. Um, so when you, when you start up the software, you're just going to get a screen that looks like this. And Monitoring flight, you're not going to be able to do because it's not a telemetry altimeter. Uh, but you can configure the, alt, the altimeter. And when you do that, you can see here it brings up a, a screen on the device. And it sees it automatically because I'm already connected, so I can click Select. And then from here, I can configure the altimeter. Um, the one thing that we talked about in the last video was that by default, it's set to deploy the main parachute at 250 meters. And this is where you can change it. So if you didn't want it at 250 meters, you can set it to 200 or, or whatever. I'm just going to leave it at 250. Um, the Apogee delays and the Apogee lockouts, um, consult the, uh, the user's manual for that. Um, that's getting into some pretty advanced stuff. And right now, the igniter firing mode is set for dual deployment. Um, that's the typical. Um, I don't need to change anything, so I'm just going to close this screen. And just say close anyway. Okay. Um, 
Now, the last time we fire, uh, did the video, we did uh, get flight data uh, because whenever it flies, it gets flight data, um, even in the vacuum chamber. So I can go here to save flight data, and this is where you're going to download your data. Again, it's going to um, say select the device. I'll do select it, and it's going to tell me that uh, it sees two flights. Um, I ran the test twice, um, once to make sure I knew what I was doing before I did it on the camera. So that's why there's a number one and a number two. So I only need to download flight number two, and I'll click OK. And it's downloading the data, and it does it really quick. And then it can say, do you want to delete your flight data? Um, and I'm going to say yes, I'm going to delete it all because it only has enough room for five flights and I don't need the data once it's, once it's done. So I'm going to click OK and I delete all my data. So right now, all the memory on the, on the altimeter is, is emptied. It's blank, which is good. Um, now I can go um, to some of the other buttons here. Configure Alt OS. Um, this is kind of like the user's preferences, and I don't need to change anything. Uh, load maps, that's if it has GPS on board. Some of the other uh, Altus Metrum devices do. Don't need that. Monitoring idle, don't need that. Ground station, no. Replay flight, no. Uh, but I can do um, graph the data. And it's looking in the Telemetrum folder for the flight. And so I'm going to find my flight. And here's the one that I did in the last video. And I'll click Open. And it loads the data. Um, let's see if I can make this bigger so you can see what's going on. OK. So um, if you remember from the last video, um, if I click here on the flight statistics, it'll tell me what my uh, peak altitude was. Um, and maximum height, 8,690 8, meters. In the last video, I think we were, it said about 9,000 meters. Um, because of the way my vacuum chamber was working, it was a little bit, a little bit flaky. And so I'm expecting this maximum height to be a little bit different. Uh, maximum speed, um, what it does is it, it integrates the data to find speed based on um, distance versus time. Um, because it was a vacuum chamber, this doesn't mean anything at this time. I mean, we did not go Mach 7.9. Um, and it tells us you know, how fast the rocket was coming down, the ascent time, and things like that. And going back to the graph, you can zoom in on the graph. Um, I'm not exactly sure. There we go. You can just click and drag, and you can see, um, you know, so you can get a better view of the flight. My red line here is the height. It's a nice smooth curve, so I'm pretty confident in that, that that was the actual height it, that it went. Um, the, the other thing that I want to look at is where the um, actual ejection charges were fired. So I'm going to go to con uh, configure graph and I want to uh, look at some of these. I think it's battery voltage, strobe voltage, main voltage. I'm going to turn off speed and acceleration because I don't need those. Okay, so now I'm looking at at the graph and see this line right here, I can see a spike in my voltage. Um, so that's where the uh, actual Apogee was fired. Um, it wasn't, you know, again, because this was done in a vacuum chamber um, and it was a little bit flaky, you know, pressures were changing rapidly. So it was actually uh, fired at right here about 6,500 feet. But the other one down here 
it fired the main bolted um, main parachute right here and you can see let me zoom in on that and it was right at 250 meters which is what we expected very cool so I've, I've downloaded my data and I can analyze my data and I'm, I'm happy with everything so far so I'm going to go ahead and close that out um, you can also export that data into uh, a spreadsheet so if you want to do an Excel spreadsheet so you if you want to do more data manipulation on it um, flash image is if there's new software for the board um, you can download it to your computer and then send it over to here. Um, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, go ahead and read the user's manual on how to do that. One other thing you can do is to fire igniters from here to test your battery. Remember, none of the power is coming from the computer into the altimeter. So if I want to test my battery to see if it will fire an igniter, I can do it right here from the computer. Um, by clicking on the fire igniter button and when you do that it brings up you know select your device and uh, then it wants me to tell me which igniter that I'm going to fire so if I click uh, fire the the apogee igniter and arm it it should be ready to go and I'm going to put it inside of a a glass jar because I'm doing this um, here inside of a room if I was doing it outdoors I would shield my eyes <laughs> okay so this is my uh, apogee igniter right there so I'm going to just put it under a glass jar I don't know if you can see that or not oh, I just pulled out my switch and when you do that I lost my connection so let me plug my switch back in Okay, so this is my um, Apogee igniter. So I'm just going to put it under a glass jar. Hopefully you can see this. I'll say select that one. Fire the Apogee, arm it. It's going to give me a countdown. If I want to do it immediately, I'll go four, three, two, one, fire. In fire. Huh, interesting. I keep losing connection. One of my igniter wires. Let's try doing the main. Three, two, one, fire. There it goes. <laughs> oh, that was cool. <laughs> All right. And so then on the screen, it tells me that my main is now open. So that's another little cool feature you can do with the, uh, with the software. Um, so that's basically an overview of how to use the software. Uh, I'm getting the igniter smell, so I'm going to wrap up this video pretty quick. So my name is Tim Van Milligan. This is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. Um, if you like the uh, altimeter, come to the Apogee Components website. You can buy it there. Um, so again, may the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.